In my opinion, writing is the hardest part of the filmmaking process, and there's plenty of in-depth story talk online, so I wanted to strip it back to the basics, the 101 of screenwriting to help you get started if you've never done it before. But I'm not here to tell you the correct way to write a script. I've written hundreds of sketches, around 20 short films, and a handful of features. I've also developed a few projects with large production companies, and I still feel like I'm learning a lot with every single project. So my goal for this episode is to show you what's working for me right now, in hopes that it helps you as well. We're going to be talking concepts, log lines, structure, formatting, writing, and feedback and rewrites. We have markers for each section below if you want to jump to anything specific, but otherwise, let's start with concept. A concept is the central idea of your story. For instance, the concept of Back to the Future is a young man travels to the past where he encounters his parents as teenagers. Or we have the concept for Inception. A thief uses advanced technology to enter people's dreams and extract valuable secrets. Often, the concept is just the central sticky idea that you can build on top of. But how do you come up with that initial idea? Some of my favorite concepts came as bolts of lightning out of nowhere. I think these lightning bolts are just the result of your brain taking your experiences as ingredients and tossing them into a stew of how you see the world. But there are plenty of concepts I came up with intentionally, like when a production company requested something specific, or I have a single ingredient to start with. Something like a base idea of an action film where the lead needs to steal money to pay off the main baddie. This puts you into a box and adds a lot of restrictions, and I think that's a good thing. If you have a whole universe of possibilities, it's impossible to drive that down to one single idea. But if you start with even a single ingredient, you have a lane to follow. Now you could start building on top of that idea to find what the sticky concept is. Like, what if our lead was a gambling addict and he owes several violent bookies money, all of which are coming to collect at the same time? Now we could start to think about who this protagonist is. Is this an everyman or woman? Have they barely had a fight their whole life? Or do they come from a background of violence. You could start trying ideas out, sampling these different flavors together. And the key here for me has always been time. I don't always have the luxury of it, but when I do, I like to let ideas cook as long as possible. But even if my idea started from a moment, a theme, or just a vibe that I can see or feel more than articulate yet, my next step is always what's the base concept, and then how does that build into my main premise? And a great way to refine and explore that is with a logline. A logline is a short summary of your story. The idea of a logline is to get someone interested enough to read your script. For an example, and sticking with our two from before, the logline for Back to the Future is, a young man is transported to the past where he must reunite with his parents before he and his future cease to exist. As you can see, we're getting a bigger sense of what the plot will be here, and it can go deeper, like the logline for Inception. A thief who steals corporate secrets through the use of dream-sharing technology is given the inverse task of planting an idea into the mind of a CEO, but his tragic past may doom the project and his team to disaster. We have a lot more of the story hinted here. We have a sense of the genre, the protagonist, the goal, and the conflict. And another one I really love is from Home Alone. An eight-year-old troublemaker must protect his house from a pair of burglars when he is accidentally left home alone by his family during Christmas vacation. It tells you everything you need to know and gets you curious enough to want to find out more. And honestly, I used to hate log lines. They've been required for every script that I've sent out, and each time I was doing those log lines after I wrote the script. But once I shifted and made writing the log line a part of my development process, I kind of fell in love with them. They became a way of reducing the idea down to its most basic elements and helped me to find the best direction forward. And it is a whole lot easier to write a log line before you've gotten into all the detailed nuance of the script. This approach might not be for everyone, but give it a shot using the log line as a sort of creative practice to prompt you in a direction. And I'm going to put links below to give you some details about how to write a log line. Right before I start toying with the structure of the story, I'm in my idea vomit phase. This is where I'm what ifing like a bad man. What if the protagonist lost his wife? What if she died while he was driving? What if she left him because of the gambling? He lost everything and now he's about to lose his life too. What if there's a scene in a repair shop? He drops a car on someone. What if this action scene or that action moment happened? How does he get the money? What if he steals it from the same people he owes it to? What if he somehow fixes a gambling event to make sure he will win? What if he doesn't get the money? Going through all all these ifs for every angle helps me dial in what the story wants and doesn't want. And as I get further along with this idea dump, structure starts to bleed into this process. I start figuring out where in the story I'm going to place ideas that are sticking. Mostly, I'm looking at landing the big moments here. Who is the character? What do they want? What do they need? What is their arc? Then my mile markers, like the opening, the midpoint of Act 1, the shift into Act 2, the midpoint of Act 2, the shift into Act 3, and the ending. I personally don't move into the next 
next phase until I have all of those. They often will change as I develop, but having something there gives me a target to aim at as I go. I'm not going to get into the different structure ideas like the three, five, or six acts. There's story clocks and save the cat. All great and viable, just depends on what works for you. I'll put some links below for you to dive into if you want to learn more about structure. Some are episodes that we've done, some aren't, including an episode of Script Notes that I think is required listening for any writer. But figuring out the structure is where my actual writing begins. During this stage, I start my scriptment, and this is where formatting starts to come in. But before we get to that, let's thank today's sponsor. Everyone knows finding the right song for your project is time consuming and endlessly frustrating, especially if you have a specific type of song in mind. Finding something that matches that is usually next to impossible. Well, used to be. Recently, Musicbed released a new AI powered tool called Search by Song that allows you to use any song by any artist in the world to instantly find hundreds of similar songs ready to license for your next project. All you have to do is type the name of any song or artist here and click Find Similar. One second later, you have hundreds of songs that fit that. Five. I can even grab a link to a song on Spotify and paste that here to accomplish the same goal. It's impressively accurate, but you can still refine your search by filters or attributes if you want. And this saves a ton of time since you aren't having to give a broad keyword, then click song after song, sifting through things that aren't in the right lane for you. Now you just reference a song and you get a ton of options that fit that style right away. And it lets you discover music you wouldn't have otherwise. And with over 60,000 songs, Musicbed has the largest curated collection collection so you know you won't use the same song twice. Plus, it's Musicbed, so you know you're getting emotional and authentic music for your film. And honestly, it is easily the best song search I've used yet. So switch to Musicbed and experience what you can only find with their exclusive collection of music using the link in the description below. Formatting is an easily solved problem with any of the great script writing software that's out there now. You have Highland, Final Draft, Fade In as the top three, and I actually use all of those for different things. I'm writing a few comics in Highland, Film Riot in Fade In, and Final Draft for my features and short films. But any of them will work great for you, it's just a matter of preference. But even with the software handling the margins for you, we need to know what the elements are and how to use them. And first is the scene heading. This tells you inside or interior, INT, or outside, exterior, which is EXT. Or if it's both, like a car scene, you can use EXT slash INT. After that, you have the location. This is obvious enough, but if you have a location inside of a location, say a character's bedroom, it would become Avery's house, bedroom, followed by the time of day. Next, you have an action line, which will describe what happens in your scene, and it's written in the present tense. This is where you describe your setting, characters, their actions, give a sense of pace and tone. It's all the important information outside of dialogue. Here is my favorite opening action line, which is from the first page of M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. Interior basement evening. A naked light bulb sparks to life. It dangles from the ceiling of the basement. Light, quick footsteps as Anna Crow moves down the stairs. Anna is the rare combination of beauty and innocence. She stands in the chilly basement in an elegant summer dress that outlines her slender body. Her gentle eyes move across the empty room and come to rest on a rack of wine bottles covering one entire wall. She walks to the bottles. Her fingertips slide over the labels. She stops when she finds just the right one. A tiny smile as she slides it out. Anna turns to leave, stops. She stares at the shadowy basement. It's an unsettling place. She stands very still and watches her breath form a tiny cloud in the cold air. She's visibly uncomfortable. Anna Crow moves for the staircase in a hurry, each step faster than the next. She climbs out of the basement in another burst of light, quick footsteps. We hear her hit the light switch. The light bulb dies, dripping black devours the room. So you can see we're getting a really great sense of character, location, but also tone and pace and the dread that's going to be coming throughout the film. And you'll notice a few things were capitalized. In an action line, the main things you'll capitalize are the first time a character is introduced, this signals to the reader that this is a new character, sounds, important props, vehicles or other elements that need specific emphasis, and you can also use it sparingly to add emphasis on a moment like this here. Then another thing to keep in mind with your action line is its length. The more lines in an action line, the more daunting it feels for the reader and the more likely they're going to skim. You can also use the length of your action line to convey pace. Overall, action lines are like music. There's many genres of music, but each has its rhythm and function. The best thing to do here is read a lot of scripts. See how they do action lines. When it's effective for you, analyze that. 
Next up, you have the character queue. Then next to that, you'll have your character extension. You have VO for voiceover and OS for off-screen. Off-screen is for characters that are physically in the scene but not shown on camera. And voiceover is for characters that are not physically in the scene. For instance, someone yelling from the other room would be off-screen, while a voice from the radio would be voiceover. Under that, before dialogue, you can add a parenthetical. This is a bit of direction for the below dialogue, like to John or to herself or sarcastically. Like capitalization, you're going to want to be sparing here. But of course, after that, you have dialogue. And the final one we're going to talk about is transitions, and it's what it sounds like, and it looks like this. That is the base 101 of formatting. There's plenty more to get into, and we could spend a whole episode on that. Maybe we will, but for now, we're going to leave it at that. But at this point in the process, I have my main plot, I know who my main characters are, I have my ideas for all my main mile markers, and most importantly, I know the beginning and the ending. Most often, I have an idea of what my theme is, but it often changes, so I stay completely open to the story taking me in whatever direction it wants. But having at least the idea of a theme helps me stay on a specific course. And as I'm doing all that, I'm creating a beat sheet as I place my ideas like I showed before. So now I can take that and begin writing my scriptment. A scriptment is a document that lives somewhere between a script and a treatment, made popular by James Cameron. You can read some of his online to get an idea if you'd like, but it's a document that uses the format of a treatment and a script. So you have dialogue and action lines like you would in your final script, but it's all a lot more loose. If I'm feeling inspired, I'll fully draft a scene, but if I'm feeling stuck, I'll just write it in sparse treatment style, or leave it just with something like, Liz argues with her mom, finds out her dad's still alive, then I move on. Doing it this way, I won't get stuck trying to figure out the details of a scene I'm not ready to write yet, but it does allow me structurally to place in all the elements that I know I'm going to need and where I'm going to need them, which also makes it easy to move that around later. My latest was done at the request of a production company. They wanted a treatment, but I went for this instead. In the end, I had this 42-page document that clearly conveys the film in a deeper way, since I'm drafting some scenes out more to give a full sense of how the horror will land or how the characters will talk. But what I love most about this is once I'm done, I have a massive jump start on writing the actual script. I have most the intimidating parts of the process all figured out, and I can just start filling in the details in this doc. For me, this process forces me to consistently and rapidly iterate, building consistently on ideas instead of marrying myself to any of them. Like I just showed, we miyagi ourselves and we have a big jump start on the script at this point. And honestly, covering the creative writing side could be three videos all on their own. So I just want to talk about the three main things here. Show, don't tell, pacing, and tell the truth. Show Don't Tell is what you've already heard a million times, but something I'm always trying to do is reveal information to the audience in a host of ways, and letting that information trickle in throughout the script, with the main goal of avoiding the cursed info dump, which is where entertainment goes to die. Because it's just true, information is a lot more interesting when it's received through the movement of the story. It's not to say a character can't be delivering it through dialogue, but do that through forward motion and sparingly. There's a great quote on how to handle every scene in your script, and that is arrive late and leave early, which means to enter a scene already in progress and leave while it's still interesting. Seeing a character enter a room, sit at a table, and start a conversation is usually not that interesting, though nothing is definitive. Everything can work in the right context. But in my experience, 99% of the time, this is true. Instead of showing them enter and doing all that, cut right to the table in the middle of the conversation. It's much more entertaining and engaging when the audience is forced to catch up instead of being ahead of your story. This is a weird one. Since I'm writing fiction and making it all up, there's nothing to be honest about. But weirdly, I have found that I can feel it when I'm not allowing the story to be honest. And there's two sides to this for me. The first is write what you know. And I'm not saying don't write about space because you've never been there. What I mean is you can't truly be emotionally honest about something if you haven't experienced that emotion in some way. If you've never had children, you aren't going to be able to understand what the specific love feels like from the perspective of a parent. So I need to understand the thematic and emotional elements of my story, or I'm just AI recreating what other people have made. And the second element is what the story wants to do. Once I know my characters and the world I'm creating, I can sort of feel it when I'm not being honest, which is to say, not doing what the story wants. I know that sounds kind of cryptic and dumb, but I think that you'll see what I'm saying once you are at this point in the process. The key for me is to listen to my gut. When I have that tension, there's a reason and I need to dig back in. 
This is a hard one because who you select to give you feedback can energize you or become a massive speed bump. For me, it took years of asking different people for feedback to find my small group of trusted friends that I know understand my voice and give clear, honest, and constructive feedback, and most importantly, share my taste and I like their taste. My main advice here is to look for people who don't feel like they need to give feedback. Some of the most damaging feedback I've been given is from people who feel like they need to have an opinion on something, either to prove that they deserve their job in a studio or production company sense, or a friend who just wants to be helpful and feels bad not giving you anything, or worse, wants to look smart. Another helpful thing, which is an idea I stole from a friend, is I'll make a questionnaire on Google Forms that the reader can just fill out after the fact. This takes the pressure off them for coming up with things to comment on and allows you to get specific reactions to things you're curious or unsure about. It's also a great way to see if your themes are coming across or how they felt about the characters and so on. I love rewriting. This is where you make everything work. Trying new directions, throwing things out, bringing back old ideas, and so on. Jordan Peele has a great quote for this. When I'm writing the first draft, I'm constantly reminding myself that I'm simply shoveling sand into a box so that I can later build castles. My first rewrite is done after I finish the script and take a few days to get a fresh eye on it. Then I'll read it again, do my own notes, and dig back in. After that is when I'll send it out to those friends that I talked about before, wash, rinse, repeat. With each draft, I'm focusing on pulling the characters out more, making them more consistent and unique. And at this point, I know my theme, so I'm doing the work to pull that to the surface as well and layering in subtext throughout. And I will say about the rewriting process, for my first couple of scripts, each time it was was terrifying and I didn't love it yet. And I think that's because I felt like, hey, I wrote this thing that was pretty good. I like it and there's no way that I can do it again. So if I have to rewrite it, I'm just gonna make it worse, not better. But once you do the rewrite, you find that every single rewrite makes the film a whole lot better not worse, and you get more comfortable with it over time. Again, this is my personal process, which is sort of an amalgamation of things that I've adopted from other writers and things that I've discovered along the way myself. Of course, what works for one may not work for another, so take what makes sense and throw out the rest. But that is it for today. Writing is a massive topic that we could spend hours and hours on, but hopefully these basic ideas will help you get started in the right direction. As always, if you dug this episode, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.